Okay, this is Fizz2320 Computing 2, and this is going to continue our set of videos on numerical Python um, by starting to explore the SciPy module. And in particular, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at how to find roots and turning points in functions. So, first of all, SciPy. So, um, the introduction to the SciPy documentation describes SciPy as a collection of mathematical algorithms and convenience functions built on top of NumPy um, and that this is adding significant power to interactive Python um, by giving the user like you um, high-level commands um, and classes for manipulating and visualizing data and really that's pretty much what it does it does what it says on the tin um, so the particular set of problems we're going to look at today and how we use SciPy for them are what are generally called optimization problems. So um, optimization describes any kind of problem where you're trying to find an answer um, that matches some criteria. And by that I mean, for example, things like finding the minimum value of a function. So where is it as small as possible? Or finding roots. Uh, whereas it's as close to zero as possible. There's also another very, very important class of um, optimization problems, which is to find values of a parameters that go into a function such that a function describes a set of data points as closely as possible. In other words, curve fitting. Um, and because that's such a, a critical part of um, using computing in, in physics, we're going to cover that in a separate video. So in today's video, we're going to look just at uh, finding minimum values um, and also by extension maximum values, so looking for turning points, um, and also finding roots, uh, values of functions that are as close to zero as possible. Okay, so we're going to start by um, looking at how we can use SciPy to find roots. So our friend here is SciPy.optimize, uh, which is a module that's got many, many functions in it for finding roots. Um, we're going to make use of just one of those, the fsolve function. Um, and in order to use this, we're going to have to have a Python function that describes the function we're trying to find the roots for. So in other words, we have to take the, the whatever function it is that we're trying to find the roots for, and we have to code it up as a, as a Python function. We're also going to have to give some starting guesses, because um, uh, essentially what these routines do is they evaluate the function they try and work out which way it's sloping. They step along in the direction of the downhill slope a bit, or um, step along in the direction of going towards zero a bit, um, and then they make another guess and they work out the slope there, and they they carry on working their way round, getting closer and closer to either the minimum value if you're trying to find the minimum value, or um, getting closer and closer to zero if that's what you're trying to do. And generally these functions have lots and lots of tuning options. The good news is, is that you can often get quite a long way without having to worry about them. So if we zip over to the um, SciPy documentation page, then um, there's quite a good sort of set of introductions and tutorials, but we're going to go straight into the reference pages and we need to go and look at the SciPy optimize module. And then we have a whole collection of routines listed here. So some of these are for um, minimizing functions um, and fitting them. Um, but down here we have root finding. And in particular, we're going to go for this fsolve function. So this is the documentation page for it. Um, and as you can see, it takes really an awful lot of parameters. Um, and it can return a lot of information as well. Um, the good news is really the only things you have to provide is the uh, function you're trying to fit and its starting values. And if that function takes any extra arguments, you're going to have to go and provide what those extra arguments are. And the rest of these are largely optional um, parameters that you can use to tune the fitting process. Okay, so let's go and have a look at some code then. Okay, so um, I've just started off by um, writing a little bit of script, which is going to define the function we're going to work with. Um, so we just start by importing NumPy, and we're going to import matplotlib uh, pyplot. Um, so those are covered, uh, obviously, in the earlier NumPy videos and um, in the plotting data videos. 
um, and now we're going to define our function here um, so you see it takes in as its first parameter and it's very important this is the first parameter is going to be the the x values for the functions in other words the, the continuous variable and then after that it just takes a whole bunch of other parameters that are going to fine-tune the output of our function and you see what it's going to return is uh, an expression which is just a, a sum of a couple of a sine and a cos um, and weighted with an exponential function. Um, so just to show you an idea of what that actually looks like I'm going to um, create a value of a set of x values ranging from plus or minus 10 um, I'm going to go and plot our function as a function of x. So we'll just run that and there we go and you see it's a kind of little pulse heartbeat shape or something a bit like that. So this is our function I'm going to work with. Um, and the first thing I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and find all the roots in this function. Um, and in particular I'm going to just look between minus 5 and plus 5 because we can see straight away that it gets a bit boring outside of that range. Okay, so what we're going to do is first of all we're going to import uh, our function. There we go. So f solve, that's the, the workhorse that we're going to need to go and do. Um, and in fact, we can start off very simply by just sort of demonstrating how it works. Um, so if I just run that to make sure I've got my f solve in, so I can just type f solve my function, a starting value, and now I need to give it the extra arguments. So that's just this set of numbers here and in fact what we can do is we can save ourselves a bit of typing in the long run. I can just go and create a variable called params that has all of those in it and then I can use that notation, the star params to pass all of them in one go. Uh, that's covered in the second or third video on uh, functions. Um, okay and that should be fine. Oh I need another it's missing a, a close brackets. Right okay um, so in fact let's just run those so we get our params there as well. So in our um, variable explorer we should now have our params, just check, yes that's still plotted the same thing. So we can just demonstrate very quickly how we use it. So f solve thunk, the starting value, let's say 1 and then we need to pass it in the args keyword all those extra parameters that define the exact shape of the function we're fitting. From that it comes back and tells us oh there's a root at 1.04 whatever um, whatever which is going to be about right. So let's go now you see it's found a root that's quite close to 1 so I started a, a different starting value let's try a starting value of 2 and you see now it's found another root at 1.8. So it's only ever going to find you one root at a time for each starting value. And of course sometimes it may find you the same thing if you... Um, so you see if we start at one and a half we get the same answer as if we started at um, two. So in other words it's just converging on the root from either side of the root. Um, so in order to find all the roots we're going to have to go and try searching a whole bunch of different routines, a whole bunch of different places. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a set of starting values. 21 should be more than enough to make sure we find all the roots. Um, and then what we can go and do is we can then go and have it um, check all of those and show us where those starting roots are. So we could do for um, now I probably don't want to call it x. Um, 
to x start in x zero. that root okay so I'm just gonna making a call to that F solve routine inside this for loop it's gonna find a root and then what we'll do is we'll just go and plot that root into our plot so um, now we know the y coordinates of the root must be zero, um, and let's give that um, a red circle. Okay, so what we've done here is we've created a set of starting values, so ranging from minus five to plus five in twenty-one values. Um, so that's every half, um, every half along the x-axis, and we're going to go through each of those in turn, I'm going to have a go and figure out where the root is uh, that's closest to that starting value um, given the parameters we've given into our function and then we're just going to plot where that root is we know since it's a root it must be crossing zero and I'm going to plot that with a, a red circle. Okay so let's give that a whirl and there we go. Um, now what you can see here is one of the interesting ones is that sometimes it goes and um, uh, finds a root that's quite a long way away. So what's happened here is it's the way it's actually doing this is if you started at say um, uh, here, it goes as okay I'm above zero and I'm going quite steeply down. So I'm going to take a small step. I'm going to take another small step. I'm going to take another small step. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. I'm going to step back. And so it iterates, homes in on where the true root is. The problem we've got here is we've ended up with a function that has um, some very flat areas so what it's done is it's overstepped and then it's carried on going which is why it's pulled out these roots that are outside of the range we were looking at but you can see it has successfully found all the roots that we were interested in so all the points at which it crosses the zero line so what you need to go and do is we need to just go and discard any roots that are outside of the range of things we're interested in um, that's easy enough to do There we go. So I've just done a little check. So as if the absolute value of the root is greater than 5, so in other words it's outside plus or minus 5, just skip over to the next one. So if we close that plot and rerun, there you go. It's kept it to keeping just the roots that are within plus or minus 5. Okay. Right. Um, so that. Um, as you see, it's actually really very simple. It just goes and works away and returns the roots. You have to just check that it doesn't go outside of a range if your function has lots of different slopes in it. Um, the other thing we could have done there is we could have played around with the uh, some of the extra parameters to control how big a step it takes. Um, so um, if we go back to the documentation, then there are options in here um, that says the um, the, the better tolerance but also will control how fast you um, let it step away at any given time. Okay so that was um, just simply using fsolve to find zeros. Um, minimization then. So um, it's a very similar process. Um, we're now trying to find the, um, the, the maximum or the minimum value in our function. Um, again there's lots of different routines. Um, but our friend here is probably the fmin function because it's one of the simplest to use. So again, just like root finding, it's the same thing. It doesn't find you the global minimum. It just finds you the local minimum closest to your initial guess. So if you want to find the global minimum, you're going to have to go and search through um, uh, finding all the local minimum. Or alternatively, um, there are some specialist functions which, does act, which have a shot at actually going to do that. Um, finding global minima, um, especially when you have lots of different uh, dimensions. Um, so at the moment we've just been doing one-dimensional functions, but if you've got a function that's got 
um, two or three or four dimensions, finding a global minima in that can be really, really tough. Um, so then you can look for um, scipy.optimize has a number of different ways of going about trying to do that. <coughs> okay, so back to our code. Well, we'll leave the um, stuff for root finding there and we'll just add in uh, fmin as well. So fmin is going to work in a very, very similar way. So all I'm going to do is going to add into our code here minima equals fmin func x start args equals params. Um, let's also do the same thing that, um, uh, in fact, what we'll do is we'll take out the, the check. I'll just redo that check. So let me plot things. Um, if the root or the minima is within five. So I'm just going to change my logic of my if there, like so. And we can do something similar uh, for the minima we've just found. So if the minima is within the range plus or minus five, we're going to plot the minima. Um, now we can't plot it at zero. We want to plot a little dot on the actual minimum position. So we need to work out where that is. Which we can do like that. And we probably don't want to plot a red dot. Let's plot a uh, blue dot. And it's telling me here that my unindent is wrong. There we go. Okay. So the only thing I've added to here is this first line, this line in here, where I'm using fmin. Um, I should just say, actually, while I'm doing this, that you'll see that um, when I'm asking it what function to pass in, I'm just passing the bare name of the function. Um, so if you go back to the functions videos, I said that when you did a def func, um, whatever, what you actually created was a variable called func that had some code. So what I'm passing into fsolve and fmin is my variable func that happens to be uh, happens to have a value that's some executable code. So um, this is one of the things with Python it kind of blurs the distinction between what's a function and what's a variable because in some senses functions are just variables that store code that you can run. Um, so what I'm passing into it is the name of the function, not the function call itself, not the value produced by the function, but I'm actually passing it the name of the function. So I'm passing it a function as a as a variable um, into another function. Okay, so I've added, I've got this fmin here, I've got the fsolve here, uh, one's producing the minima, one's producing the root, and we're going to go and plot them all up. And there we go. So the blue are now the minimum value, and you can see just by inspection that that looks right. It's found all the minima. The oscillations get pretty shallow towards the end. This is because there's a, an exponential decay uh, waiting on the the output. Um, but you can see that it has managed to find uh, all of the all of the points there. Um, now, of course, the other thing we want to probably go and do is find the maxima. Um, and if you look in the documentation, you'll see there is not an fmax function, rather annoyingly. Um, so um, instead, we're going to have to go and do a little trick. We're going to have to go and call fmin, but ask it to minimize the negative of the function that we've got here. So if we just simply invert this function um, to make it negative, then finding the minima um, of that inverted function will find the maxima of the original function. So we can do that. So what we're going to have to do here is we can't just do, it would be very tempting if we could do something like um, this. Um, unfortunately, um, minus a function variable does not work. It does not give you the 
um, just simply the negative values of the function. Um, so we're going to have to do something slightly more complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to do make use of the lambda keyword. This is covered in functions 4, I think. OK, so what I've done is I've created a new function on the fly, which takes our x variable and then takes a set of a variable number of further parameters. Um, and then, um, in fact, probably just for clarity, we should make sure we call those different things. Let's just call that star p. Oops. Just to avoid redefining our params and x's and things of like that. So our new function in here is going to take a variable t, um, a list of values, uh, parameter values, um, and then what it calculates is now this is actually a function call. You see, I've got the brackets after the func there. So this is calculating the value of func for that value of t and those parameters uh, p, and then inverts it, negates it with a minus sign there. So that does in fact produce the um, negative values of the, of the function. So that's going to locate the positions where minus our function value um, is minimum. So again, we can just add a, a similar bit of plotting, a similar uh, function there. Um, Maxima, and maxima, like so. Um, and again, just to fix the unindent. There we go. So we've now got the roots, the minima, and the maxima. Um, the maxima, as I said, we have to do this trick where we, um, in this case, I'm making use of a lambda function. You could also, of course, just define another function with a minus sign in here. So the other way of doing this, finding the maximum, was simply to define a, a new function. Um, but this is the advantage of doing it all on one line um, uh, to very quickly just calculate the, the inverse of the negative of the function we're trying to find. And it's got the same pattern otherwise. OK, so we can go and run that. And there we go. And the only thing probably I should have done is I should have made the maxima be a different colour. That's easy enough. That's just changing that blue not there. Let's make it green. And there we go. So blue on the minima, green on the maxima, um, and red for the roots. OK. So very simple as an example of using uh, fmin and fsolve to look for um, minima and maxima and roots. Uh, this is, as I say, all working for a one-dimensional function. Um, if you need to use two-dimensional functions, then uh, there are ways of doing it. You need to look at the uh, SciPy optimized documentation to find um, which functions can go and do the equivalent. It's a slightly more complicated problem, of course. OK, so just in summary then, I've introduced you to, to SciPy optimize um, and the routes to find minima and maxima in functions. Um, and just for simple cases, um, fsolve and fmin can be your friend. Um, for finding the roots and the minima, and just note that you can find the maxima as well with just a little bit of extra work. Um, but the really important thing here to bear in mind is in both these cases you need some function um, of a continuous variable. So you need to be able to express whatever it is you're trying to root find or minimize as some function where you've got a value, some variable x that can take any value you like, it, it gives a defined function. Um, uh, how are you going to handle trying to do the same thing when you've got um, uh, data that's been measured as a set of discrete points. So if you've measured a set of, of, of data points and you're trying to figure out then, based on those data points, where it crosses zero or where it has a minimum value, is a slightly trickier problem. And that's where you generally need to either have um, a model that you can fit to your data or you need to be able to interpolate your data. And I'll be able to go and cover both of those in another video.